This is Tucker and today we're going to go ahead and do a little lower dog leg repair on the front fenders of the old blue goose. That way we can go ahead and get the fenders mounted on here to where we can get the lines pretty good with the front of the doors and then uh, get the hood set on there so we can get that front end mocked up to where we can cut them frame rails off and, and uh, figure out how we're going to mount the front clip. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that and see where we end up. Well we got the old passenger side fender setting up here on the stand so we can work on it. And we're going to start off by replacing this inner brace right here that actually bolts it to the car. And uh, this one's actually a lot better shape than most of them I've seen. I've seen a lot of them where this, from about here down, is completely gone. But uh, it's got a little bit of a pinhole starting over here. And some rot right there. This side's, you know, quite a little bit bigger gap. But uh, it's, it's definitely enough here for a pattern. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, make a cardboard template of this on all three sides there and we'll get some 16 gauge which is about 60 thousandths thick and go ahead and cut us out a some new material there weld us a new nut on the back side of it and get this all welded in and then uh, after we get that done then we'll go ahead and start on the outer of it and uh, she's got a little bit of a drunk bump up here on the corner we'll get that hammer dollied out and then we'll cut back until we can get into some pretty clean metal here and make us an outer patch so we'll get set up here and get started. All right, I think that ought to, ought to about take care of us here on that. We'll go ahead and get our pieces of sheet metal cut out. And we should be able to use this same pattern on, on both sides with the mirror image it on the bends. So we'll get that sheet metal set up here and we'll get it cut out. All right, so we got our sheet metal setting up here. And here's what we ended up with on cardboard patterns here. And as you can see, the, the front side's a little bit thicker than the uh, back side. So we had to do two patterns there. You know, and then this one's kind of a little bit of an angle. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut two sets of everything because we'll be able to mirror image it for the driver's side fender. We'll just be able to break, you know, bend it over the opposite direction as we're doing it. So. We'll go ahead and draw this out, doubled up, and then we'll get the plasma cutter and cut us a couple little pieces here. All right, now that we got our pieces all cut out, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean them up a little bit, put the shine to them with, with our little die grinder here.
All right, now that the old inner brace here has had a little time to cool down, we can go ahead and take it and look at it here. And what we're going to do next, we're going to take a 3-8-16 nut and bolt it, stick it on the back side of this, tighten it down with a bolt, turn it over and weld it in on the back side. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and grind all these welds off and then cut the old brace off and see if we can get it attached so we can start welding the outer patch on there. But I think it's going to look all right once we get it done. Uh, it's kind of got the same contour to it on the both sides of it there, so it should fit all right once we get that in there. Uh, the only thing is you want to make sure that if you're doing this, that you want to go ahead and make it narrow down just like this one for right in here because on the Tri-5s, if not, it'll hit on the, on the uh, firewall and you won't be able to get your fender tightened in uh, as close as it needs to be. So that's kind of why we had to go through all that that extra work there to make that thing look about like the, the one we were replacing. All right, so we went ahead and got our piece all cleaned up here and uh, went ahead and welded a nut on the back side of it here. That way we can tighten the fender on there like factory has. So this thing came out looking halfway decent. We got the old one cut out of there. So like I said, we'll be ready to get the new one in here, get it welded on into place here. It's, it's supposed to sit in there. About like that right there. So we'll get that welded in. And like I said, we'll straighten this up a little bit and flip it over and get the other side. Uh, and and if, if there's people out there that uh, don't want to go through the trouble of making this, they reproduce this whole piece. I don't think you can get just the short inner piece. I think you have to buy it and it comes clear up to here. So if you use the whole thing, you'd have to drill all them spot welds out. I, you know, probably most people probably would just cut it off where it needed to be and use it, but they're like a hundred and some bucks a piece like a little over a hundred bucks so uh you know heck if you're a new guy or gal to this stuff and you're in uh kind of want to learn how to do stuff anyhow heck you can use that if you have to replace both sides use that 200 bucks to buy you one of them cheap plasma cutters and and uh make your own but uh Now that we got this piece melded in here, we're going to go ahead and grind down the welds just a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and uh, get started on the other side. Now that we got the fender flip back over here, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a cardboard pattern and go ahead and trim out this rusted outer and replace it with some new skin. The rust is pretty much right here confined where the old brace is at on the underneath side. The rest of it all seems to be pretty good with hardly any pitage or anything. So we'll, we'll go ahead and cut us out a piece and start getting it welded in. Well, we got that little louder fender patch all trimmed up to fit here and in place, cleaned up around the edges. So another thing I wanted to recommend to some of you guys and gals out there that are just kind of getting started in, in messing with this metal work and stuff on these old cars is uh, getting yourself one of these little copper spoons here. Uh, most of you guys already know all this, but just for the few people that don't, uh, these work out really good, especially when you're doing butt welding and stuff. You can stick that up underneath the panel that you're going to be welding, and it uh, keeps you from burning through as bad. And, and in my opinion, it soaks up a lot of the heat and keeps you from warping your thin sheet metal as bad. 
Uh, I always keep like three or four of these around and that way I can you know bend them different shapes here to go up underneath different size panels and stuff and I don't have to keep bending the same one but uh, they work really good like I said the metal doesn't stick to them so you can just stick them back there and uh, they're kind of a lifesaver if you do a lot of butt welding so we'll get her welded up and ground and then we'll be ready to start on the other fender All right, well, we got that weld all ground down, and it doesn't look like we're going to have to come in here with any more welding to do. Sometimes you'll, you'll see a few spots that you need to come back in and hit again, but uh, this time it looks like we, we pretty much hit everything we needed. So the next step will be to go ahead and uh, I'm going to drill a couple holes on this fender up here for the fuel injection emblems. And then uh, I'll flip this over, and usually I'll try to, like, wherever I've welded in some panels or butt welded in some stuff, I'll try to come in here with the with a little sanding disc kind of knock that rust off of there take some of that pour 15 and brush a heavy coat of it on there i don't know if that's really going to help or not but i always kind of try to give it as much help as we can to keep it from rusting out again so after we get that done i'll uh, pull the driver's side fender off and pretty much repeat everything that we did on this one well i hope you all found this video entertaining or at least helpful if there's anybody out there that's doing a budget repair on the lower fenders of a tri-5 chevy so we're going to go ahead and get the other one done and get this front end squared up so i can get her mounted to that buick roadmaster chassis and at least we're a little step closer here to getting her on the road now the fenders won't be flopping in the wind so i want to thank everybody that's been watching and following along on this build and until next time take care